Hello, it's that time again. I'm here to discuss the uh, Exeter Board of Supervisors meeting held on September 9th, 2019. The following are my opinions, including some slides that I've included where I've inserted my opinions on those topics as well. I just want you to know that uh, these videos are filmed with an iPhone 10. And if uh, you're not interested in my opinions, all you need to do is when you start watching this, go down to below the video on YouTube, click on see more, and you will see the index that I have there. And you can go directly to the area of the meeting that you wish to look at, you wish to view. You'll see the, in, you'll see the agenda. You will see a time that's in a blue color Click on that time and it will take you directly to the portion of the meeting that you wish to listen to. And I just want to say that uh, during uh, just a few comments about uh, the meeting, uh, during the video you'll hear at some point where the operator of my phone uh, asks them to speak louder, please. Uh, this happens. Uh, a number of times in this particular meeting. It's happened in past meetings. But what's a little different in this meeting, you'll finally hear some uh, private citizens also speak up and make it clear that they're not able to hear the discussions that are going on. So hopefully the Board of Supervisors will uh, notice what we're talking about here and make some accommodations so that everyone can hear. And uh, that's one thing you want to notice. Another thing I wanted to mention is uh, I, I also took notice of the fact that when they do the reports at the end of the meetings, the manager's report is missing. There's uh, actually it says no manager's report. So here's a gentleman, Mr. Uh, Granger, who holds many, many different titles. He's the treasurer, he's the secretary. He's the Chief Administrative Officer. He's the Right to Know Officer. He's the Grievance Officer. And of course, he's the Township Manager. And yet, for the past four meetings that I've checked, there has been no management report. And it's hard to believe that in the, our Township, with all the things that are going on, that the Township Manager has nothing to report to the Board, and to the citizens that attend this meeting on a regular basis. Finally, I want to talk, before we go into the slides, I want to talk about the situation relating to the grievance officer uh, actions or uh, responsibilities of Mr. Granger. The police report directly to Mr. Granger, and he's been assigned as a grievance officer. And recently there's been discussion at the last meeting where I felt it was a conflict of interest. And you'll hear in this meeting the board discussing the fact or trying to uh, smooth over this issue, claiming that, well, Mr. Granger comes to the board, it's not his decision. However, the fact is that he's the one who will be out in the field investigating the grievance, and he will in his words and in his opinion bring this information to the board. Now, Mr. Granger, in my estimation, has an, uh, somewhat of a uh, problem with telling the truth sometimes. We've seen this in financial information he's presented and we've seen in previous jobs where he's had problems. Uh, I guess the, the word would be uh, the ethically challenged. So in my opinion, I still remain convinced that this is unfair to anyone in the police department who has a grievance. And I'm hoping the chief will step forward, he's been here long enough now, and step up for his men and uh, point out that this is a conflict of interest and Mr. Granger needs to be removed from this process. Now, I don't know what the grievance is. It could be, you know, anything. 
And I'm not concerned about the grievance itself. I'm concerned about concerned about the process. And it has to be fair. It always has to be fair, especially with our policemen. They put their lives on the line every day for us. They deserve much better than this. So I hope you'll go into the meetings in the future, express your opinions about this. In fact, I think uh, some private citizens probably have done this already because uh, they rarely backtrack on an issue and make comments about it like they have in this particular meeting related to the, uh, the grievance, trying to explain it away. Don't believe it. Don't believe what they're telling you. There is still a conflict of interest as long as Mr. Granger is involved in this process. So let's hope that they'll come to their senses and change this uh, situation. Now you're going to see five slides that I decided to make uh, because I can put the information right there so you can see it supporting my opinions related to certain activities that have uh, are in are mentioned in this meeting so from we'll go on from here I hope you enjoy my my opinions and enjoy the video thank you This slide is, uh, dis is uh, discussing what happened uh, at the meeting that you'll see soon uh, on September 9, 2019, where Diana Reeser uh, went to the, uh, during the public uh, comment section, uh, discussed the fact that her comments were not accurately reflected in the minutes. And so I wanted to display this and give you my opinion on what's going on here. So on the left, you can see where David Costable, a, a, a reporter for the Reading Eagle, uh, an excerpt from his article, uh, basically reporting what Mrs. Reeser said during her public comment period. And then below, to the right, you can see what Mr. Casadis and Mr. Granger decided to put in the minutes. And it clearly has no representation to what was actually said. And I'm very, very disturbed about this. You should be as well, because at least with public comments, it should be as clearly articulated in these minutes so that the public knows what other private citizens are communicating to the board. And the fact that Mr. Casadis has his opinions interjected into this public comment period is a further indication of how much of a control freak he, he probably is. He cannot help himself by interjecting his comments into the public comment period. So what can we do about this? I'm not sure. All we could do right now is expose what's going on and hope that we'll see change. We have two non-elected supervisors who are running for election in November. They're sitting there they see the same thing I do. They see the same thing that all of you are seeing, and yet none of them step up and comment about the inaccuracy and the unfairness of what is going on. And the problem is, if you go into that room and you criticize the chairperson or the work that the Board of Supervisors are doing, uh, you basically become a potential uh, enemy and you can expect to be attacked at some point in time, particularly if you show up more than once. And this was the second time that I saw uh, Mrs. Reeser attend a meeting. She's one of, the, of a new 
group of, of citizens that are starting to take an interest in what's going on in our community. And I hope more people will do that. Uh, it's, it's very dramatic at these meetings. I'll talk about that in a later slide. But uh, I hope we can get more people out there. I hope that you will go to the meeting and you will express your concerns about how the Board of Supervisors is communicating public comment to the rest of the public. So uh, read what we've written here and uh, hope to see you at the meeting. This slide is the official document allowing the tax levy on Exeter Township for the $5 per capita tax. You will hear this being discussed in a public comment section by me with the uh, township supervisors during this meeting, the supervisors meeting of September 9th, 2019. And as this document will show that the General Assembly has approved a $5 levy and in Exeter Township for 18 years of age and over. Note that this tax requires reenacted annually. And supposedly the most current legislation is on file in the township offices. And I've requested a copy of that reenacted document for 2019 and the previous five years. What I'd like to point out here is that the annual list of residents is provided to the board by the Board of Assessments. It's a report called the Tax Duplicate List. And the Board of Assessments and Revision of Taxes of Berks County provide this to the Board of Supervisors. And also the Board of Supervisors have the opportunity to review and add the names of residents to this list if they are missing. For example, Lisa Vanderlane and her significant others' uh, names should have been added to this list but never were added, even as she sat on the Board of Supervisors for about four years. Also note who collects these taxes. It's our tax collector who was duly elected in Exeter Township. And it also talks about discounts and penalties that can be incurred. So the reason why I'm talking about this, because you will hear in the meeting, as you listen to the uh, and watch the video, that our solicitor suggests that the collection of this tax is outsourced. And she is terribly incorrect on this matter. And uh, you will hear comments from Mr. Spies uh, supporting her contention. But the fact of the matter is that it's not outsourced. The business privilege tax is outsourced, but not the per capita tax. Any of you who have paid this tax know that you send your per capita tax payment into Charlie Diamond's office, or you go in there personally and you write a check and pay Charlie for the uh, per capita tax. So clearly it's not outsourced. So our solicitor is blatantly incorrect on this. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing that should be noted is that Mrs. Vanderlane and her significant other have failed to pay this per capita tax for at least 10 years. Certainly as long as she's resided in Exeter Township, she's never paid it. And I want you to listen carefully to Mr. Vincent Biancone explain why this is okay. He claims that because she decided not to take payment in her position as a supervisor, this allows her 
the privilege of not paying this per capita tax. Now, this should be a problem for everyone. Mr. Cohn is running for election this year in November. He's never been elected. He was appointed to the board last year. Uh, very little experience uh, as a supervisor. And listen to the logic that he presents in this discussion. And you decide if you really want someone like this on the Board of Supervisors for the next six years. It's totally di separate issues. He doesn't under comprehend the situation. When you assess the tax, it's your obligation to pay it. And it's clear that Lisa Vanderlein evaded paying this tax. Now, the argument could be made, well, it's not that much money. Well, think about it. $15 over 10 years for two people, 60% of that money goes to support the children in, in the school system. 40% goes to the township taxpayers. And they refuse to even look into this issue that I've raised. Now, I was hoping, what, what I expected was a board that would be sane, intelligent, and reasonable, and at least say, well, let's go talk to the tax collector and find out if what Mr. Hughes is saying is accurate. And if they do that, they'll find out that I am precise about this, and they should direct the tax collector to send a bill for 2019 to Mr. Mrs. Va Vanderlane and her significant other living at 5560 Boyertown Pike. And they should also send a second bill collecting, they can only go back five years, so they could collect uh, the previous five years with uh, late fees, fines, and if uh, interest is allowed, uh, with interest. This money is legitimately taxed and should be collected on everyone uh, who lives in the township of Exeter Township. And there's no special exception for Lisa Vanderlane because she was a supervisor or she was chairman of the board of the supervisors. Again, you can look at 340-4 annual list of residents. By the direction of the Board of Supervisors, names could have been added. Lisa Vanderlane sat on that board. She should have known, she had to have known that other people were paying this per capita tax and that she was required to pay it as well, but she never volunteered to add her name to this list. So, if you're, if you're unhappy because you've got to pay a lot of taxes and you see our supervisors not fulfilling their res responsibilities, and in fact, you see our current res uh, supervisors refusing to pursue this, then you need to go into the meeting and you need to voice your opinion. Okay, here is one of the biggest issues of the meeting on September 9th, 2019. This has to do with uh, an agreement uh, negotiated uh, by Vincent B. and Cohn, and uh, we're trying to find out who else was involved. It, it seems that they, they don't seem to know who was even involved in negotiations, or they won't tell us. Uh, with uh, Mr. Mascaro and his attorney, uh, Fox. And uh, you could see the, there was a full article in the Reading Eagle. This is just some excerpts from it, from uh, the uh, uh, David Costival, who was uh, the uh, reporter on this. And you could see that uh, the supervisors negotiated an extra 10 cents per ton uh, Amazing increase, right? So now we're going to receive $2.35 per ton of waste after almost 20 years of dumping garbage in our backyard. And the township supervisors uh, thinks they think this is a great deal, okay? Uh, 
Mr. Casadas says, this shows that we are business savvy. Well, I don't let you decide how much savvy these guys have. They really have no experience in negotiating. They have no idea. When, when Mr. Casadas was asked in this meeting uh, if he knew what the uh, rates were for other municipalities, uh, he had no clue. So I'm wondering who had the information and who had the experience to negotiate. <clears throat> So let's, let's just uh, break this down a little bit so we can understand exactly what we got, all right? So we're going to get $0.10 cents more per ton. And they're telling us that that's going to increase our revenue by $40,000 a year. So if we divide $0.10 cents into 40000 it tells us that they're going to dump 400,000 tons of garbage in our backyard. Okay? Everybody following me so far? And if that's the case, I, I looked at what, you know, some, some places are charging to dump a ton of garbage in the landfill, and I've estimated it's $65 a, a ton. And so this means that Mr. Mascaro has revenue of $26 million a year. And if you take the 400,000 tons of garbage times $2.35, we're going to get $940,000 uh, for giving him the privilege of dumping that garbage again in our backyard. Uh, it doesn't seem to me as a fair deal. I could be wrong. All of this is just my opinion. But uh, I would expect this to do a little bit better after over 18 years of having Mr. Mascaro dumping garbage from all over the East Coast into our backyard, creating various issues that we could discuss another time. But... What I was hoping to see is something closer to $3.90 to $4 a ton. Uh, based on the revenue expectations, uh, this seems a fair, a more fair deal. So you think about this and you decide for yourself. Now also, the, the devil is in the details. And this, this particular case where it's been uh, widely advertised that Mr. Mascaro is donating a million dollars to the township to build towards the, a new firehouse. Well, I'm not sure that that's exactly true because if you get into the details of this agreement, there's actually... Two agreements that Exeter Township has to sign. And the first agreement is an amendment to the existing agreement to increase the, the 10%, the 10 cent per ton increase. And if we sign that agreement, then we'll get $500,000 of the 1 million over a five year period. So it's not a donation, it's it's attached to a contingency on this amendment agreement. It's not a donation. It's characterized as one, but at least to, to me, in my opinion, it's not a donation because if we don't sign the amended agreement, we don't get the $500,000. And then there's the second agreement which is characterized as a joint cooperation agreement. And I believe it's going to allow them to dump even more garbage in our backyard because it needs an approval from the DEP. And the other $500,000 of the $1 million would then be avail made available to us by Mr. Mascaro, but only again if the agreement is signed and the DEP approves it. Now, these two $500,000 payments are going to be made over five years. We're not getting a million dollars in a check. It's going to be paid over five years. So does that mean that we wait 
until we get all this money to build the fire station. We have to wait another five years. And also, let me suggest as a financial analyst and an accountant for 40 years, uh, remind everyone about a little item called the present value of money. So basically, the concept is if a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow because of the time value of money. So when you look at the the payment of $200,000 a year over five years, and we calculate that on a 4% interest rate, Mr. Mascaro isn't giving us a million dollars. He's giving us a little bit more than $800,000 in today's money because it's being paid over five years. So you have to be careful when you analyze these uh, negotiations and contracts. Now, we don't know all the other things that might be in this agreement because no one has been able to see the agreement. Uh, we're, ish we're going to submit a right-to-know request, and as you know, often these requests, we have to wait 35 days because Mr. Granger wants to treat everyone the same. I do want to commend uh, Mr. Mascaro and Mr. Bill Fox for their negotiating skills because, in, in my opinion, they certainly negotiated a very, very good deal for their company. And uh, that's not a criticism. This is the way business works. Uh, hopefully, you have a win-win situation when you negotiate. But in my opinion, I, I think Mr. Mascaro and Mr. Fox, uh, uh, would I would say they, they won uh, pretty big on this negotiation. And we'll see some of the uh, additional facts when we finally get to see the agreement. In this slide, what I'm trying to uh, communicate to you is a concern of mine, which I express in the public comments in, during this meeting on September 9th, 2019, where I talk about the need for a policy requiring the board to approve fund transfers. You'll see here, these are excerpts from the Township of Exeter agreed upon procedures that was uh, an audit requested for the Reading Country Club because of all the issues concerning the what they thought were missing funds, but were not actually missing funds, but just uh, transferred improperly without their knowledge in some cases, or maybe they forgot. But it, it shows the need for a policy to recognize fund transfers uh, from one fund to another, internal transfers. And you can see here, um, uh, providing you with four different instances in this report where it states specifically or alludes to the fact that the township did not have a policy requiring board approval of fund transfers. So that's all that I'm trying to show here. And if you listen to my comments, and then Mr. Crusaders, uh had to comment on my comments and interjected that these were just internal uh, transfers, uh, suggesting that it, it wasn't important or uh, my comments about it were not important. But we still do not have a policy. I don't see anything happening in the future where they will develop a policy, although uh, one of the supervisors said that they're working on it. Uh, we'll see if it actually happens. It should also be noted that uh, Mr. Granger in 2018 transferred $7 million from the sewer fund into the general fund. And at this meeting on September 9, 2019, you'll hear Carl Schemberg ask Mr. Casadis if he knows where that $7 million came from. 
And in a rare moment, he admitted that he did not know. Well, Carl knows, and I know where it came from, and other people know that it was the proceeds of a bond issue many years ago. And this money has been sitting there, $7 million, for many years, and it was intended to be used to keep the plant in good running condition and up to date. But they didn't do that, of course. And I believe that the transfer of this money out of the sewer fund is an illegal transfer. It's part of the sewer fund capital, uh, moved uh, improperly. It should be used when the sewer fund is finally dissolved, if, if it's sold to uh, uh, Pennsylvania American Water, and we dissolve the sewer fund. Those funds should be used to pay off the bond that we had issued. Uh, so it should be used to pay off the bondholders. And then if there's anything left over from that, the residual, I think, should be returned to the ratepayers, since the sewer fund will no longer exist. So I, maybe it's their inexperience. Maybe they're not taking the time to understand what they're doing. But certainly this transfer was made. Uh, it was communicated somewhere, but it was never approved by the board. So did Mr. Granger do this on his own? Or was did someone in the administration direct him to do it? Did a supervisor tell him to do it? And that information wasn't recorded for the public knowledge. We don't, these are questions that need to be answered. And I'm hoping that you'll help me by going into the meetings and asking these questions and expecting an answer. But it's, it's fairly clear to me that we, we need a policy that recognizes the transfer of funds from one fund to another fund so that there's complete transparency and there's no mistaking what happened to the funds and what they are. And with that, we're going to go into our last slide. It's basically uh, just my reflections on what could possibly be happening in our meetings that make them so difficult to uh, attend sometimes. And you'll hear that next, and then we'll go right into the meeting. Thanks for your attention. I've tried to, I've tried to figure out what's wrong with our meetings. Uh, they don't seem uh, to be very relaxing or enjoyable. There seems to be an air of antagonism between the Board of Supervisors and the public. The treatment that we get from the supervisors is, is quite uh, unique. It's almost like... Uh, it's, a, it's we and them instead of our supervisors working for us and listening to what we have to say and uh, concerned about what we are thinking in terms of what's good for the community, what we would like. And our feedback doesn't seem to be welcomed at, at almost every turn. So what, what could cause this? What, what is causing the, the, the friction in these meetings? And recently there was an article in the Reading Eagle on their website, and someone mentioned that one of the board members uh, seemed to uh, possess the classic symptoms of narcissism. So I went and I looked up this, this thing, uh, NPD or Narcissistic Personality Disorder, and so I thought I'd post this slide. And you can read uh, the typical symptoms. Excessive need for admiration, disregard for others' feelings, and inability to handle any criticism and a sense of entitlement. And with that, I also posted a, just one classic narcissistic trait. Uh, and you can read this. It basically talks about how someone will interrupt and talk over other people that are trying to uh, um, uh, discuss something. 
and see if you can attribute these these behaviors to anyone in the room in the meeting and I plan on looking into this uh, narcissistic personality uh, disorder uh, more deeply and bring you some information concerning this but I have a I get the sense that we may have finally stumbled onto what the real problem is in our township and particularly in all of these meetings because it's like the old saying I've heard before you can you can cut the air with a knife that's how tense these meetings become uh, at times I call the order the September 9th extra board of supervisors meeting please stand for the pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm taking the uh, meeting this evening. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Here. Mr. Anderson? Present. Mr. Spies? Here. Mr. Cusatis? Here. Not present. Yes, Darren is not present. Announcement to make with you? Well, just want to uh, congratulate Darren. Um, on Saturday, she had she a had little it. baby boy. So uh, he was 21 and a half. Uh, He's on now? Yeah. Okay. You got it. Well, I have the question on the right to know. What's on the agenda for tonight? I was just wondering to take into consideration, can we help ourselves by not making more information available that we don't have to request a right to know by sharing more? I mean, this was one of the things you talked about. I think that's what the new website, as, as mentioned earlier, the new website, it really should be a, a downtrodden of right to knows. Everything's on there now. There's data from 2008, so you're right. That's why one of the reasons the new website, it, it's easier to navigate and you should be able to use that to, to prevent the right to knows. But I'm from the old school. I don't have a computer. I don't you go to the library. I don't tell you what to do in your time. I'm saying that. I'm at the meeting now. I'm at the meeting now, see? And I, I, think, it, I think it's funny because if we all hear the same subject, yep. we all get smart. Well, we're going to post it tonight, so you're going to be able to see it. So that's another, that's another advantage tonight. Okay. And they're already posted on the internet. I know you don't have a computer, but you could have done it over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No. Computers are cheap. You can go buy one. No. What? I, I don't, I'm not going to start now. It's too old for you. Come out. You know I mean? I'll come out. I come to the meetings. I think I should hear it here. Yes, and you will. Okay. Ah. Yes, you tell them. Next up, David Hughes. Your topic is an agenda item. Name and address. David Hughes, 47th Street. Uh, first thing I'd like to mention is uh, about the uh, soon to be a little louder, please. First thing I'd like to talk about is a motion coming up soon to approve the minutes, two, two sets of minutes. I don't think they can be approved this today because if anyone has read them, some of the motions say unanimously voted on, but some of the motions do not have unanimously and do not have an indication what the vote was. So if you've all done your duty and reviewed the minutes, you know that they're not written properly. And some of the public comments related to those minutes are not uh, presented enough information to fully understand what the public comment was about. And in the public comments, some of them are inserted with Mr. Casagas' comments, which don't belong in the public comments. So with that said, I'll move on to the next issue that I want to talk about, and that is the uh, or if I could do it, reserve my comments for the golf report. I'll do it now. 
to the agenda item. <coughs> okay, one minute and 30 seconds. I will do that. The golf report is a great thing. So uh, I thank you, Mr. Spies, for standing up for this. I think you should have some additional columns like uh, a check mark or an indication when you've uh, redacted certain items for our request. Some of these things like Mr. Uh, Granger's contract, the contract that we had, the very generous contract we have with EEMA, our police chief's contract, they can be put on the website so they don't have to be requested every time. I've read a couple of these requests, I'm interested in them. Do I have to place my RTK in to get a copy or what? So the other item is uh, 40 seconds. 40, 40 seconds. Are you done? Thank you, Mr. Deuce. 40 seconds. Huh? Next up. Um, Phil, do you want to you wait until the end? Carl, you want to wait until the end? Oh, yeah. Okay. Unless you want to read it now, it's up to you. No, wait, wait for the end. Uh, Michelle, you're going to talk about item number five on new business. Yeah, I also have some general comments. Would you like me to quickly do the general? Yes. We're on the clock. <coughs> I also agree Name with and address, please. Michelle Kircher, Stonehenge 5, Thank writing. You. I also agree that the, our um, agendas and our minutes are not uh, as they should be. Ordinance should be put on them, whether they're uh, variances, ordinances, or zoning, whatever. But you cannot look back in the record, and if you see an ordinance was approved, where is it? How do we have a right to view it? So that needs to be put on. All we're asking for is transparency that we know what's going on and that we have a chance to look at it in case we have any questions. We've been asking the same questions over and over. All we want is transparency. We want to see what's going on. Please just let us see it. It's our township too. So uh, also, also the August um, 12 minutes of disbursements weren't put on. At least I could yeah, they were. They were on. They're on. Yep. They're on. Okay. I know you. Yeah, I know you had trouble today with the website. Uh, it. Yeah, it was not a fun experience it's with that website at all. So um, that that's another thing I think you really should look at and ask help about. And that's all to be bring up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Have a wonderful night. <coughs> Next up. Okay. Let's get right to it. Minutes, August 12, 2019. Excuse me. Approval. Yeah, I have a comment about them. One, my name is spelled wrong, so if you could correct oh, that. Excuse me. Oh, can I? You're on, you're on the agenda for general comments. Do you want to wait till then, please? We can't just interrupt the meeting. Well, it's about the minutes, though. Do you want to talk about the minutes, then? Can you talk now about the minutes? Okay. okay. Well, I have something else to say. You wrote that general comment. I did, because I have general comments. Okay. Do you want me? Yes. Can okay. I still talk with general comments? I, I would rather you both now. Well, I. they're not about the agenda. <laughs> Okay. You can talk. Okay. Jesus. Do you want to talk now or not? Well, I wanted to say that I don't okay. think you represented my comments. Correctly. Okay. Well, can you please get the podium? So it's on record. So you're going to talk about the agenda. This is your agenda. Okay. Yes. Name and address, please. Diana Reeser, 4134 Lincoln. Louder. Thanks. All I wanted to say is when my name is spelled incorrectly, it's D I A N N A. Last okay. name is correct. My comments were not, I do not leave reflected accurately. If you would like a copy of what I said, I'm more than happy to give it to you and you can summarize it, but I'm, it was not, that is not what I spoke about in the public comments and I'd like it corrected. Okay. okay. And did you, what else do you want to talk about? I'd rather wait till the end, okay. they're not agenda Okay, items. that's fine. She's going to be All right, August 12, 2019 minutes. Motion to approve. We're going to. Yeah. We may change the spelling, but I mean, I think. Again, keep in mind the minutes are a spirit of the meeting. They are. It's not going to be verbatim, it's not going to be word for word. It's the spirit of the meeting. Reading them should give you an idea of what was said. And I found no issue personally. Um, you're not going to get every single detail, you're going to get the spirit of the, of the meeting. Yeah, I was going to say that as well, but I mean, yeah, you're never going to get them correct, but uh, I know normally we put attachments on there, but I don't think we normally post an ordinance on the minutes? I don't 
<laughs> but they're available on the website, the ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go just commenting on the ordinance. I know you can go and just go down through the the codes and the new ordinance ordinance would be posted there that you can look up right after seeing. And they're all they're all on the website. And they're also advertised, you know, before they're um, before they're adopted. So they're available in the town building. They're available in the newspaper office Brittany, and the library. Brittany Eagle Library, Mr. Howell. They're, you could get them in numerous ways, and there can be amendments or corrections at a later date as well. So I, I don't know if it's a good policy, but maybe in public, if you see something drastically wrong that is not the spirit, that it could be submitted either by email or dropped off, and we can consider that for yep. addition. Because I mean, the overall spirit of the minutes was was there. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the August 12th minutes with the spelling Miss Reeser's name correctly. I'll, I'll second. second. Any further discussion? Big Jeffs. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Next to approve August 26, 2019 minutes. I'll make the motion to approve it. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Disbursements. Make a motion to approve the disbursement subject to audit. Or not Treasury Support Jeff, just make a motion to approve them. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. All in one Old business, Michelle. Monthly golf report. Okay, this has been submitted through to the board on the manager. A little louder, please. Sure. These have been already submitted to the board for review during the uh, review period starting over the weekend. These are the summary statements here, and these are also posted onto the website for people to review prior to the meeting. These are posted Friday on the website, as, as I had said on some of the social media channels. So this was already here for everybody to do, to talk about transparency, talk about you know having everything out there. So again, this was something that the public could have digested throughout the weekend. Some good news on the golf, you know, 361 more rounds from last year, the month of August, and $43,589 less expense than last year. So, and then I know you always ask the question, how many rounds are left with the package? Uh, $26,954 is left from the people that pre-purchased the packages. So, a great story. Again, it's the fact that we cut the maintenance and increased the rounds. The golf course is making money. It's, it's a simple business. Just cut expense and drive the revenue up and that's why I think this is you know one of the better years that we've had at the golf course because we're looking at it monthly we're being proactive and we are saying you know making adjustments as it happens so anybody else have any comments I have some no. would you ask about the expenses give us a chance to look at them Mr. On the Mr. Mr. Hughes you talked with your agenda and you should have brought it up it's not a circus this is our meeting to get things done Sorry, it's not a town hall. <clears throat> but I think. No, I would just comment. I mean, it was a very solid month for revenue, considering we have airification on the course. So essentially, we had one week less of revenue. So eighty-five thousand or so of revenue. <clears throat> Normally, you know, certainly on, on uh, July, June, we were up around a hundred thousand. But I mean, it was very solid on the revenue side. Um, for people that you know dig through the numbers that have been posted out on, on the website there are a couple anomalies you know that I, I need to correct it for myself too there were actually three pay periods in the month so it made the profit look lower so you basically had six weeks of pay instead of four in a normal month so that adds you know fifteen thousand dollars or so so there's a couple things on there our annual software contract and everything we're on that month things come together like that so Looking at it as a snapshot on the month, you know, it looks worse than it was. It was actually a very good month, and year to date, you know, we're on track, doing very well. Yeah, the, day, the other thing, folks, is the sixteen thousand dollars was due to the tent <coughs> and the rent due to the mold issue. So that's kind of like a call out on the report that sixteen thousand was due to the mold. So those tents that we had to get for the several outings that we had, that's that expense. So we wanted the public to be aware that we actually put that in there, but that was not due to the golf course operation. That was due to the mold in the in the um, in the clubhouse. And the other the other comment I would say as we get into the budget cycle, um, you know, just the monthly reporting has been quite good. That you're you're tracking month to month, seeing where the issues are, seeing what you can do on the revenue side. So I think it's going to help us a lot 
you know, in transparency where year to year you look at it once a year and, and then no one's really up to speed on it. So I think this will be a good baseline. Derek Ryan's team and the entire township staff have done a really, really good job. So yeah. uh, kudos to them and all that. I said to, that to you, David, about, you know, like it, it, before it's like, oh, it's the end of the year. And you're like, oh, well, we lost $100,000. And it's like, well, why? Why didn't we know this ahead of time? So at least, like you said, we're tracking it. So I, I'm very pleased with it. They've done a real good job, too. Uh, like, twice this weekend of um, raking a lot more of the traps too. So that, that's been a nice improvement. Great. Okay, next up, monthly right to know request report. This is a new thing we're doing, what we're doing, and again, this was on the website on Friday. If you were bored over the weekend, you could have looked at all these. Um, July and August right to knows are posted. What we have is the person's name, what they requested, we took the address out to protect the innocent, and there are items there to show the public, hey, this is what, the, this is what people are. are we good? Larry, can you bring that up for us? Can you bring up the right to know letter? <coughs> you July. So that, um, my good friend, Let, uh, look, there you go, bro. <laughs> Take a picture. Yeah. Give a smartphone. Um, there we go. That's what they're sort of requesting. So now, um, this is July and August, as I said. Now the, you know, the board could discuss this report. Is it valuable? Is it something we want to show? That's what we want to kind of talk about the, the no. July and August are posted. This is who requested them, what the request is. And another um, stat is August, we had 11 right to knows. Seven were answered within five days. Two were denied for legal reasons. So again, it's another story. I noticed there was commotion about, oh, I'm waiting 30, 35 days. Well, no, it actually got there seven in five days. So a pretty, um, you know, again, there's gonna be times when you have to wait 30, 35 days. That's reality. And there's something that's more pressing with the township. Your right to know may wait, but we're gonna get to them when we get to them based off the current staff needs. Question. I mean, I think most people have, uh, a, a lot of people have computers and do look at them over the weekend. Except for, except for Glenn. No, is there, is there a way, I don't think we have a public copier here in the office, but I mean, like you could charge per copies, is there a way to just have a hard copy of these on Friday? Well, of course, it wouldn't be available till Monday. If someone wanted to come in and get copies of them, they could charge. Yes, that's definitely something we can do. Yeah. Is there a- need to get copies of any of the things on the agenda. <coughs> agenda. Thank you. We're charging it, Glenn. Pardon? We're charging it. Mock and paper. We do some credit card. Dollar sheet. <laughs> so, my bad. Question was, though, I'm, I'm not overly excited about the having the description of the request on there just because you could have a crazy neighbor that wants to know about and then just keep filing on somebody. And I just think it's just. Like I just, I, I'm fine to see the name and you know how many days it took and all that. I just don't think we need to have the description per se on it as a report. And if we're going to put this, we should put from the year to date. We should go with this January. That's all public of any, so I'm okay with the description. Okay, I mean as long as it's. I'm just saying you could just get a. I guess we'll redact if it's something that's controversial between two neighbors, we'll redact the names. We did have it reviewed by legal counsel to make sure that we were in good standing to have that posted. Okay. Um, we did try to give vague overviews. We don't give complete detail of what's on the re no, request form. Um, yeah, the request forms themselves are public record. Um, in the event that the request did identify anything that should be redacted, however, uh, we would redact it before production. So. And so this is July and August. Can yes. we get January to July then up? If we're gonna do it, do it all, the whole year. Then do it all. If you're gonna keep doing it, then just do it for the whole year. So that is a project that could be done. It would cost um, legal time, so we would have to have expense and time to be able to complete those requests. What does the other well, board members think? If you would January through June. What was it? Four hundred. I would like to see it, but I'd like to know how much it costs too, because. We factor in what it costs to do it right to know, and now we're factoring in what it costs to summarize. No, I know, but I mean, I, I think it's a factor. I mean, I yeah. see to me the power. Like some seem to get excessive with how many they make. That's I think. You know, so I think to me the story is who's requesting them and mm -hmm. what they're requesting, and a lot of it is frivolous. So yeah. that's what I think is the more powerful item. Mm -hmm. To get costs is going to be another game that's huge. Louder, please. Huge endeavor. So if he wants an addition to this to figure out the cost calculation, we would have to figure out legal time as well as staff time. Um, that would be a lot of accounting for us to be doing. Aren't, aren't we already billed for the legal time? Uh, it was not until the board requested that we have the invoices split out that we started oh, okay. doing that, so it didn't occur until July. Mm -hmm. 
And again, we can go back, but there'll be an expense to legal to. Well, I'm not like that. Or maybe for the rest of the year, have a simplified version without the cost. It would be a cost estimate. Maybe look at whatever would be easiest. Right. But mm -hmm. so. Because sometimes it's, it doesn't go to legal. Sometimes right. Michelle's team can handle it. Mm -hmm. so a lot of times you're looking at, hey, it took Tina a half hour. She's getting paid $2 yeah. an hour, so it's five bucks. But I also like it's kind of like I asked Lori about how many people watch the video, right. and we didn't average, and that's views, that's not people, that's the number of views, and we didn't even hit 100 views. And that's when before we started the videos again, I just was asking how much does it cost, and mm -hmm. there was no real basis. But I mean, they just kind of threw a number that could maybe $350, you know, a month. So again, it's another cost. I just, you know. I mean, I just thought, it, I didn't know how hard it would be to post it up. To what, to go back or put it To go cost? back to what we had. Again, I'm, I'm not looking at what we have. Why don't we just get an estimate how long it might take, and then we'll, we could talk about the next meeting. Yeah, because I don't want to lose a lot of money or time on it. I said just don't. But to me, I, that's, to me, that's good. Um, we could talk about adding cost and going retro it until January, but let's, you know, let's keep this going every month. Good stuff. Next up, new business. Adopt ordinance further establishing fireworks regulations. We beat this back to dead pulp over the year. Um, was there any board discussion about the fireworks ordinance? We did that. No, I mean, I think we did review it and we tried to take everyone's concerns into it. I mean, nothing can happen more than an hour unless, you know, people jump through a lot of hoops and it comes to this board, it gets discussed at a public meeting. It's exactly. probably not going to happen. It's a possibility, but well, and it's not even this board. It's the board's continuing on. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. from here forward, at least. You know, before, what did we have by the state? There was nothing. Right. Was event. And for me, there's a chance that there's a site somewhere in the township where it would be could be acceptable. But yeah, I agree. If it's say. out far and you know, but other than that, like they said, they would have to jump through hoops and get a vote from us. And I think an hour default option right now is good and then anything more than that needs to be discussed at a public meeting and voted on. I won't have to call the cops at like 10 o'clock on Saturday, but I just went outside and just yelled at the top of my lungs to knock off the fireworks. <laughs> I'll call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. I ring doorbell, I got a video. I'll make the motion to adopt the ordinance further establishing fireworks regulations. I'll second. Any further discussion? Okay. I was in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Next up, authorize administration to advertise for bids for the 2019-20 winter snow plow. Mr. Chairman, the board is uh, being asked to review the possibility for the administration to go out to advertise for bids for the 2019-2020 winter snow plowing season. I know it's nice and warm outside right now, but we are thinking about snow season. Um, so we'd like to have the board authorize us to start the advertise for bids. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Next up, consider re resolution approving stormwater management operation and maintenance agreement for 341 Stonetown Road. We received a application for a stormwater plan uh, for the resident of 341 Stonetown Road. Their proposed improvements include uh, the construction of a roof over an existing horse uh, riding trail or track. Um, with the increase in the roof area, this this the stormwater our stormwater ordinance, which is our Act 167 uh, ordinance, uh, must be in compliance. The applicant did prepare a stormwater plan, received the necessary approvals. Our office did review, and the plan is in compliance with our Act 167 stormwater ordinance. As part of that ordinance requirement, uh, the applicant must enter into a, a what we call an operation and maintenance of the. Uh, BMP's best management practices, stormwater devices, which is between the township and the applicant to ensure that these uh, measures are maintained properly uh, through, throughout their uh, life expectancy, uh, as well as, as perform the routine maintenance. It's a standard form that we do have in our ordinance, and we are recommending to the board <laughs> an agreement uh, for, for the operation of maintenance. Uh, about 340, 341 Stone Town Road. Okay. <coughs> Questions? If the board wants to move forward with this, we need a resolution um, approving the stormwater management and operation and maintenance agreement for 341 Stone Town Road. 
I'll make the motion. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Next up. A second favorite topic. <laughs> Establish date for trick or treat then. <laughs> Recommend board establishes October 31st from 5 to 8. Last year, we got a lot of good feedback from the residents saying Halloween should be one night. I know many, many years it's always been two nights, but many, many residents, when I door knock during the campaign, say Halloween should be one night, one night, one night. So to me, Halloween is Halloween, so it should be one night. I'm very passionate about this issue. <laughs> Halloween should be one night, October 31st. Do we actually should we go to 9 p.m. Yes, though, we maybe? To, we have to well, no. Yeah. Just yeah. 8 a, Yeah. Nine, Seems like 8 is early. <laughs> well, I think it's early. My wife loves handing out candy. But it's a school yeah. night. So, for clarification, yes, the board does need to approve the time frame. We talked about this last year. Um, last year's time frame was from 5 until 9 p.m. You can do that as well this year. Again, for those not wishing to participate, you can certainly turn your lights off and not participate. This is to allow people the opportunity who want to to be out and trick or treating during that time. So you can just let us know that you'd like to have a time. Okay with it. Yeah. If it's just going to be a Halloween. It's just one night. No, I know that. Oh, well, we do have to. Why do we have that? I think we. we it is a township yeah. requirement. It's an ordinance, so we have to yeah. approve it. Because it's like if you want to have kids go trick or treat, go trick or treat. And it's like. I just feel stupid that we even have to. That's government. Nice. That, that's government. That's right. government. <laughs> Chief, are you okay with 9 p.m.? Yes, sir. Yes. And if you want it sooner, just turn your lights out. So we'll go exactly. 5 to 9? I'm, I'm okay with that. Is the residents okay with 9 p.m.? Yes. No one's going to complain. <laughs> 5 to 9 p.m. 5, five to 6. <laughs> <laughs> 5 to 5 30. I love it. I love it. Make it 5 to 9. <laughs> Okay, so ordinance to um, establish trick or treat night for this year, October 31st, 5 to 9 p.m. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Next up, approve amendment to Pioneer Crossing Landfill Host Agreement. I think there's a correction too. Uh, there's an addition. Um, sure. Um, so the Pioneer Crossing, um, the, there's actually, there's two separate um, agreements that are involved. And just to kind of give some overview, there was an existing agreement that's already in place uh, with the township. Um, and it is to extend, you know, significantly further into the future. And the township felt that there was um, a better deal that could be struck financially as well as additional controls um, in place. Um, so there's there's going to be two different um, documents that are involved here, agreements. Um, the one is an amendment to the original landfill host agreement. Um, very favorable terms financially for the township. There's a 10% per ton increase, which is expected to increase revenue in the vicinity of about $40,000 a year. Um, there's going to be a $500,000 payment that is made as well as marketing and cam campaign contribution, um, capital campaign efforts for a new firehouse. And there's also a requirement for um, a $60,000 annual minimum contribution to a township or local organization. So that's the first agreement. The second agreement is a joint cooperation agreement. That's an additional $500,000 contribution that's going to be made towards the new firehouse. Um, and it's also uh, once there is, um, if the DEP approves dumping on the western borough area, the annual donation is going to increase from a minimum of $60,000 to $100,000 per year to a township or local organization. Oh, I'm sorry, if I said 10%, I meant 10 cents yes. per ton. Yes. Increase. Everything looked good. I just had a question about the, the two 500,000. How are those payments going to be broken up? I know we had said we we're going to do 200,000 over five years, if I, if I remember correctly. The, the amendment um, provides for $100,000 annually for five years. Um, the joint cooperation agreement, I don't have the details of that in front of me right now to speak to. Same thing. Same, same thing? Same. Okay, 100,000 for five years. Okay, so 100 from each, so 200, 200 total for five years. Exactly. Awesome. The million total. We're both posted to um, on our SharePoint. Mm -hmm. 
much comments? I think it's great. I, I think it's wonderful. To, uh, and, I, and also Pat's going to help lead the campaign to, uh, to get other businesses to help, uh, help fund for the fire department. Anything we can help take off of what the taxpayers or whatever we might be spending up at the promenade is just phenomenal. And to give uh, our fire department what they, what they need for one thing and deserve, but more so what they really need and to help them grow. I mean, I can't think of a better, a better thing to be happening. So I agree. It's great. It was a very good negotiation and very much appreciated. Yep, I think it shows that the, this board is business savvy and we got a great deal done. And more important thing is that the fire department, most of you guys are here tonight. You know, you guys, I know we've been talking about this for many, many years, even before I was a supervisor. So we're excited that you guys get what you guys, you know, are going to, something that we've talked about for many, many years is finally coming to a reality. So I want to thank Pat and his team and, and our team. I think it's a really great deal. And I think it's something that, again, it's, you know, I always talk about the sins of the past, but, you know, this is a great deal going forward. So. I just want to thank everybody for their work and their, um, I think this is a win-win for everybody and it gets us closer to the station and it less tax dollars involved to, to build the central station, so. I'd like to thank, thank Vinny too, because he took time off of work once or twice to, to work on this, so thanks for that. Our job. I'll make a motion to approve the amendment to Pioneer Crossing Landfill Host Agreement and. And I'll second those. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. At the end, guys. You're now you're allowed to ask something before you vote or something. Read the sunshine law. Read um, it out. Okay? Carl, please. Read your sunshine. comments are coming at, at the end. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Next up, discuss application for the zoning hearing board 191 Dowtrick Road. Uh, yeah, so um, the question here is whether we want to send anyone um, to the Zoning Hearing Board as a representative um, for the township in this matter. And I don't think the resident is here tonight, so That's um, we usually stay neutral on this, so I would say <laughs> my thought is no, as long as there's consensus from the other board members. Yeah, I don't think we have to send anyone at uh, the Zoning Protocol for us. So stay neutral. <laughs> yeah. That's all I need. Next up, approved extension of mowing contracts so with Sadasani Lawn Care for 2020. This is the last extension cost for remain at 58185 Okay, so we are looking to extend the existing contract for Yeah, this is our regular mowing contract for all the sports fields, <laughs> uh, about half the detention areas um, around the township building, library, places like that. Um, we're looking to extend it for one more year. Is there anything new with it or just the same? Same price? Same. It's the same price. They've done a pretty good job. Yes. About two years ago. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Next up, uh, authorize the. I think you guys, um, for the fire department, there's two pieces of equipment that you guys want to sell. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. We have um, two fire trucks that are actually titled to the township that the fire department would like to sell. We have uh, no longer use for them and they're ready to go up, but we would like to get requests to go ahead and have them posted for sale. You guys do them individually or <coughs> you just? A little louder, please. Do we have to do these individually or can we just vote them together? Why don't you do them individually, please? The first one is 2000 Freightliner Fire Truck. And then these get recorded on later what they actually sell for, or is there any approval of that? There's just the approval to sell it's it. It's just approval to sell. It's actually a disposal approval. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion for the 2000 Freightliner Fire Truck. I'll second that. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. <coughs> those opposed? Ayes have it. And the second one is the 1997 Spartan Fire Truck. I'll make the motion. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Oops. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Would you want to say anything, Chief? Yes, this is, um, so we, we have a uh, vehicle being specced out to deliver. Will you please speak louder? 
you go to the podium, Chief, so that the microphone. Mr. Howell, no more interruptions, please. No, it's under the wall. I can't no hear it. That's right. You can't hear it. You're doing all right. Excuse okay. me, Mr. Jordan. Okay. I have a, a right under the wall. Okay, Mr. Howell. No, it's under the law. Mr. Chief. The solicitor's not going to go by the law? You're not going to go by the law? What are we no. talking about, Mr. Howell? No, you're in violation of the law. Okay, we'll talk about it after. No, it's section, okay. it's section uh, 7101. Mr. Howell. Uh, item 3. Mr. Howell. Okay, you're breaking the law. I can ask one again. Yep. Everybody want to see Mr. who's Mr. in Mr. charge Howell. here? Read the law. Those Mr. people Howell. who got the uh, right to know, read Mr. it. Howell. That's enough. Thank you. Okay. First of all, thank you for approving the sale. Will you speak louder? Mr. Howell. Last one. Um, thank you. As you know, we're trying to reduce the number of frontline apparatus in our fleet. We have one apparatus being spec'd out, currently being delivered in approximately six to eight weeks. Um, once we take delivery on that, we're hoping to sell two apparatus um, so that the frontline apparatus will be depleted by one. And hopefully in the future that will save more fuel, will save more maintenance, wear and tear, etc. Excellent. Thank you. It's part of our overall strategic apparatus plan. Thank you. Thank you. And you have mapped out it's so like 15, 20 year plan, or it's even longer than that, right? I mean, it's. Yeah, right now it's out to 2035. And um, if, if we execute the plan, which we have in the last 15 years, um, there's no additional expense to the township on an apparatus replacement plan. We're one of the only municipalities in Berks County that has that plan. I recently attended a few workshops and um, there are at least four departments that are going to model that plan in the future. So uh, it's kind of the gold standard for Berks County and it's working quite well. Very, very nice. Very good plan. Good job, Chief. Next up, approved contract for Wolf tr Roofing in the amount of $120,400 for replacement of the roof at the Four Seasons room at the Reading Country Club. Okay. Thanks. Uh, this is to uh, provide uh, first of the material to remove and install a new roof. Ceramic, well, the remove the ceramic one and install a. It's called an old castle plaza type paper, 24 by 24 inch. Uh, this will be by Wolf Roofing at a cost of $120,000. 120,000 and $400. Uh, also, this is under the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance, which we are a member of. Uh, solves the problem that we did. Uh, we use this uh, for the farming ridge part also. When we do that. Okay, okay. So they have a good reputation. Very good. Yeah, a very well in the commercial side. It sounds like a lot, I mean, it's a very complicated, it's a large room, it's very complicated. The structure was built incorrectly. It's got to be torn down, jackhammered off. Concrete has to be removed. Has to be rebuilt basically from scratch. Yeah, it's a 60 by 32 foot roof. It's a large roof. It's and two inches of concrete that have to come off. And you're going to jackhammer off. This was not the township. Yeah. It, not the it. it was not the township's proud fault that it it's not built properly. And this roof will, they'll be able to, people can stand on it, like not yes. maybe right now. But These will okay. be regular 24 by 24 pavers that will sit on a uh, 90 gauge rotor mm -hmm. neoprene okay. uh, roof. Uh, we'll have discs on all four corners, allowing the water to run underneath it. It gets a proper drip edge, which was a problem with the last roof, it didn't have any drip edge on it. <coughs> it gets new gutters. Spiral staircases. Yes, spiral staircases. <laughs> <laughs> motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Be cool, eh? I'll, I'll second that. Any further discussion? No, I think it's great there. Save the it, room. It's just it's getting one step closer. All those in favor say aye. 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 opposed, I have it. Front reports. Um, plans. Okay. Um, We had brush collection um, last week. We had eight locations where we picked up. 
there were also three that were on three more addresses. Uh, but when we got there, there wasn't anything there, so I'm assuming we uh, took that. Um, right now, we're working uh, on Highway Bowling. We started that on, uh, I guess it was Friday. And tomorrow, we're getting 400 tons of salt. So everybody's looking forward to winter. It's <laughs> fine. Questions for Oh, one more thing. We are going to uh, pave the, uh, the trail, the last edition of the trail on the rain park. So that will be completed probably way after tomorrow. As long as everything goes right, we'll put it's about 300 tons of blacktop. The rain hollow? The rain hollow. Yeah, I was over there this weekend and there was five different <laughs> sets of people on the trail. So it was, it was definitely being used. This will add quite a bit more to it. So that a lot of people use it. Yeah, it's, it was it was nice. Happy with that progress on the rain hour. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Thank you, Chiefs. Uh, just a few things. I'd, I'd like for the township residents to be uh, mindful of a new scam that's been targeting the residents here in the township. Um, recently, we've uh, taken some reports of residents receiving uh, checks in the mail with a, an official-looking letter indicating that they uh, won the uh, uh, publisher's clearinghouse. Uh, I hate to say it, but in, in the letter is, uh, is a check that the, uh, that, that the clearinghouse is asking that the residents cash and forward money um, to, a, to a location here in the United States. Uh, unfortunately, we had a resident that was, uh, that was a victim of the scam for thousands of dollars. So if you see something like that in the mail, uh, please contact the police department. Do not cash that check, and please do not send uh, any money. Um, if you have any question about it, call us. Our officers will, will gladly come out to the house and take a look at the correspondence for you. Um, just make sure you give us a, a call. Uh, in addition, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to announce that we've finished our oral uh, uh, exam portion for our police applicants. Um, we had uh, interviewed uh, over 40 applicants over six days. Um, so we have a lot of interest uh, in the position and uh, we've been moving forward, but we have some really good applicants that will serve the township well in the future. <coughs> Questions for Chief? Thank you, sir. Um, Joe, engineer report. Just one, uh, just one quick item. Uh, Norfolk Southern, with the update on the bridge, the emergency permit has been signed and executed by both parties and issued. We are waiting for a confirmation when Norfolk Southern will start construction. <coughs> They're estimating two months only because of the manufacturing of the storm sewer structures themselves. Uh, the box has <coughs> about an eight to 10 week lead time. Um, so they're waiting for production to be complete before they mobilize and begin construction. We hope it's sooner. Um, however, that's their estimate at this time. I will keep the staff posted if that uh, construction schedule does change or gets modified, hopefully for the better or closer. But things are progressing, unfortunately. Uh, um, I know for a fact that a lot of foundries, it is there is a, a lag time for uh, storm sewer inlets, and especially the box culvert. The box culvert is probably the most time consuming because of the uh, construction <coughs> schedules and this time of year uh, production has been taking a long time. So you're saying they're going to basically start in November? That's the estimate. Most likely, if that two month uh, time frame uh, pans out, yes. It hopefully will be before that. Mm -hmm. Get the uh, material in quicker. Um, however, that's what their estimate time of uh, of construction. Is. And then, what was the estimate given the winter months involved now of, of completion? Was it a six month? I, I think it's, it'll be less than six months. I think if, if weather conditions are favorable, they'll be able to do the grading and hopefully we'll get at least the base course down on the road. Um, the temperature criteria for base course is 35 and rising so we're hoping that that if the weather we have a decent December hopefully we'll get the base down and then any final restoration such as topsoil seeding and the final wearing course can be done in the spring so we're staying optimistic that hopefully the majority of the work can get done in the fall time um, season uh, provided we don't have a harsh winter and that starts early so they didn't give us any indication how long it would take, but 
Uh, we don't think it'll take too too long, maybe several months. Not a real good job. No. Uh, I think once, once the equipment and once the materials are on site, uh, we don't anticipate it taking too long. <coughs> So odds that next football season that'll be open are very high. I, I would say yes. Okay. <laughs> when do they uh, usually close down for like the macadam? I know like sometimes the plant they'll shut it down. Sometimes it all switches. They might run all winter. Right. Some of them. If if the demand's there and the temperature's there, those plants will stay open. Um, if it's not, uh, there is a lot of projects. There's a lot of turnpike projects. There's also a lot of end up projects that haven't even begun yet, uh, some of them have. So if we do have a mild winter or a mild fall, yes, Clarence is right that some of those plants may stay open all year yes, long. Sir, it's over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, just, I, I remember one time we were at a bank and they, they closed it down in November, so we had to wait till like yeah. spring. To I, I've it. seen, I mean, I would say historically, maybe in the last few years, usually in December, January, but I would say in the last two or three years, they've been staying open as long as they can. There's such a great demand of construction work right now that a lot of these plants are staying open as long as they can, and actually, they're staying open at night at times because of the nighttime work that's being performed. I'm sure with Perkeo and Avenue, with the overlay, they're going to be doing that at nighttime, so those plants will be operating during the night as well. I know, yeah. minimize disruption. So that's all I have. I will keep Park everyone posted. Yeah. Park Yeoman Avenue. The only thing I can say, Park Yeoman Avenue, is unfortunately our progress meeting has been canceled for tomorrow. Um, uh, tentatively, right now, the overlay is not supposed to start within the next two weeks. However, I will try to confirm that schedule and get a more definitive time frame. The meeting is to be rescheduled. Hopefully, it'll be this week. If it, if not sooner um this will probably be, i think our last meeting that we'll have um however i know they're doing the final restoration and getting a lot of the trench work done and curbing we has i know we had some issues and we still do have some issues which i will pass on to proper PennDOT officials to hopefully have some meetings out in the field so some of those issues can be resolved prior to the final wearing course um, however i will warn everyone that it will be at nighttime operations so expect a lot of delays avoid that area during night. The good news is it's not going to it's not going to disrupt the day the daytime traffic flow. So um, the nighttime will work much better. And I just so that the whole board knows I asked there was a all of the fitness center had an issue with the cars backing out the way the curb was so I let him know to um, look into that, which is uh dirty diesels. It is the owner in all of these fitnesses. Um, there's trouble with the way I actually went there and the curb is a little higher for cars to back out. So I have two pictures too. I'll forward that. I'll forward that concern on to them. A lot of that though is because there's no black on there. Yeah. Yeah. Once, yeah. once that road comes up, it's you're not going to be doing that. Well, yeah, because I had some concerns. No, you had issues too. too as well, and, and even my neighbor, and, and then the guy came. The guys came out, and we were talking about it, and and I was understanding more so what they were saying. I was, my concern I was asking was why was the curb pushed out two feet from where it originally was, but he was stating that there, you know, before if you were going straight on Green Avenue, you would have ran into the old existing, like now it's more of a straight line. It's, so it's just one of those, I think you just gotta see it. But the assumption I have is they probably took some of that discontinuity that was there in the alignment. Um, I know when Clarence and I were at the last progress meeting we did pose that question and they mentioned that it was per the plan so I was assuming they tried to tweak that alignment to make it a little bit better than what it was before. Right, that's what they were saying so. That's, that's all I have, thank you. Next up, solicitor report. Um, two items. The first is the writ of summons that was authorized at the last public meeting has been filed. Um, and the second item is uh, there has been a step two grievance that has been filed. Um, I would ask the board to consider approving um, and designating John Granger as the appeal designee to hear that. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? Just the one that we reviewed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to add is that you know when we designate John, it's still a board. It's the board. The board. I know there's some confusion out there. It's so not him acting. It's not him doing it. He comes to the board. So I just want to let the people know that he's consulting us. He's not making decisions on his own. So I want the public to be aware of that. So that's happening. So that's what I wanted to add. So all those in favor, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. Michelle, the manager's report. Okay, sir. Okay, so our last few public comments. Page views. Carolina. I have a timer on my watch, so you won't have to tell me. So do I. Oh, Jesus. Address. Same address. Same address. Name and address. Forty Seventh Street. I didn't hear that. Name and address, please. Forty Seventh Street. No. Your name. David Hughes. Address. I didn't hear it. I'd like to talk about. Uh, I need your address, sir. I actually need your full address. You have to say your house number, David. You said 47th Street. You did not give your full address. Name and full address. Just say it, Dave. David Hughes, 255 West 47th Street. Thank you. Street. Very good. I want you to know you're violating Go privacy ahead. rights. <laughs> okay. So you're talking about cutting into my time. I expect to get more time because of that. Uh, I, I noted on the, uh, going through the minutes and the meetings, at 724, meeting 724 to 812, 826, and tonight, we have never have a manager's report. And the manager wears many hats. And yet we have nothing from him. He, we would think that there should be a plethora of issues that he would report to the public. But never is there a manager's report. I find that suspicious. For example, uh, on 826, you motion to the <coughs> some by scrap, some by, I think, bid. So this would be an item that you should come back and report to us if we received any monies from the scrap or any monies from uh, the bids and also advertise when that bid is going to occur. So maybe someone here would like to uh, attend and, and make an offer. Also, the transfer policy. <laughs> I hope that I mentioned it before and I'm hoping that you're working with that to identify a transfer policy from one fund <coughs> to another fund. And I think that the seven million that's sitting in the in the general fund should be moved back to the sewer fund until the sewer fund, until the sewer is sold and then the fund sewer fund can be uh, closed. Finally, I want to talk about the per capita tax. Everybody here is an extra resident has paid, paid the per capita tax or is going to. And we have a former supervisor who hasn't paid along with a significant other for about 10 years. And we can only go back and get this year's and five years prior. But the board, some of the board or all the board knows that she hasn't paid it and you're not doing anything to attempt to collect it. These monies are owned to the township residents. We pay the tax. As a supervisor, she should have paid the tax. And if you don't follow up on this and collect the tax, you send a message to every one of us here asking the question, why should we pay it? Okay? So I hope you'll follow up on this one. Direct the, uh, the tax collector to go after this uh, person. Can I ask you a question now, real quick? So, I know. So, okay, how much is it per capita? Per capita? It's fifteen dollars, right? Now, that's to the school five to the tax. As far as I know, it's not the point. As far as I know, she never took a paycheck as a supervisor, which is what two thousand dollars a year. So the whole time she's on the board, she did not take a paycheck. I get eighty two fifty a meeting. She did not take a paycheck. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. And again, if she did anything wrong, wouldn't you think the tax collector would go after it or whatever? If there's any issues with it, then it would have been handled. I, I, don't say think, they, they I don't think I you comprehend yes. the problem. I comprehend a lot more than you think. This. Alicia, maybe I can ask a, a, a different question, but this is just general about tax. I mean, we've talked about sewer before, and we have ways of going after sewer bills, but I think tax, not only because we outsource it, is there, there some legal protection things that we cannot do on tax collection in general? Yeah, I would. What's that? Yeah, obviously there are certain confidential things that can't be addressed, absolutely, with regard to um, Taxpayers' Bill of Rights. Um, but you are correct. I was going to say that the township does outsource its tax collection efforts. Uh, it's not the board that goes after any particular individual for any taxes. Yeah, and you can submit information to them, but we don't hear back what happened. Okay, that's correct. Mm -hmm. 
and the seven million dollars that we keep talking about that was an internal transfer so that is that does not need board approval so that, that's that's been addressed as well several times next up carl schemberg respectful carl Thank you. David Adams. Well, you're up there. So everybody can hear you. So Mr. Howell, pretty much. David Adams. Carl Schoenberg, 207, Lisa Lane. Thank you. I asked you to read something before the meeting started, and you said you already do this. So I said I would read it when it was my time. Specific, specific reasons for executive sessions must be announced in the public meeting either before or directly after the executive session. You said you've done that. Can you explain when you've done that? When the solicitor gives their report out, we say we had an executive session. That's not at the beginning of the meeting. As soon as you come back from the executive session, you're supposed to say what it is. Okay. And that's the sun trust. Okay. And, well, that's, and it's written, it's in part of uh, Fox Fox trial at some time. We look into it, sir. Okay, the other part was going to be quiet back there when you were voting on the host agreement. Yes. Before you vote for anything, the public has a right to speak. They don't have to be signed in, they have a right to speak. How long is the host agreement? What's that? How long is the host agreement? The, amend the amendment or the original? I have the amendment, it's about five pages. But how long is it? Is it one year, two years? 10 years? It's my understanding is it's as long as the landfill is going to be okay. in operation, correct? Right? Years for life the landfill. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I thought you meant the document when you said how long. Yeah, I thought you said how long the document Five pages. No, 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 not the length of it, but the length of time that the host agreement is good for. As so long as the landfill is, yeah. So as long as that's open, you can't renegotiate another landfill? Host uh, agreement? That, that's actually not true. Um, this original host agreement, which was in effect <coughs> since 2000, was something that we renegotiated by way of this amendment. <coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> the roof that was put on the, or it's going to be put on the country club, that didn't have to be put out for bids? No, I already explained that. I couldn't hear him. You can't hear back here. You can't hear him. Move up. Huh? Move up. It's not in the law. So it doesn't have to be put out for bids, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a cooperative purchase. And I'll look into the um, executive session for you, sir. You want a copy of it? I have an answer for you now. I have an answer for you next in two weeks. Okay. Um, again, with the sewer plant, the seven million. Do you take the seven million dollars out and just put it in the general fund? Where did the seven million come from? Don't know. You don't know. The previous orders. I don't know. But it's seven million dollars. You don't have any idea where it went? Came no. from? Yeah, you're taking it out and putting it in the general fund to pay Fox Rothschild? Nope. Yeah. It was the, the auditor. It actually did explain that at the meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. The audit, the audit that we had a couple weeks ago. I probably wasn't here. Okay, you might have been late. Is that, is that it, sir? Well, yeah, I have a question for Frank. You can tell you. Yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you in two weeks. See you, Diana. Do you want to have a general comment? Yeah. Diana Reeser, 4134 Lynn Avenue. I just have a couple questions, suggestions, whatever, however they come across. In looking at the website, um, I notice sometimes when I click on links, it goes to Facebook. And I was wanting to know if there could be an alternate, because I'm not on Facebook. So I can't see what is being referenced. Okay. So I, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, and then with the website, I'm just wondering, do we have an estimated time when it'll be completed? Because a lot of times when you click on things, you get your Yeah, there's a couple links that are still being worked on. Or are you an estimate? Uh, no. No, as well, this will be an ongoing matter because of the fact that we're populating pages. We're, we're currently working on the police department web page. We have one person dedicated to this project. Okay. So just it'll curious. be several months. Okay. And last, I just wanted to ask, um, are our swales not getting mowed anymore? Because it seems like they used to be done like twice a year, and I don't think ours has been done in quite a while. What's your address? We're in Hunter's Road. The one on the right when you come in off Shelbourne? Like after the one on the She's on land. I'm on Lynn, so it's that big swale that goes down to Lynn and comes up on Gunpowder. Well, I know Sotosani did the one right after Whitetail, Caribou, Elk, and then it's right there on the right. They just did that one. 
Oh, yeah, the, we just took pictures. I mean, we walk our dogs all yeah. the time. It's no, I pretty, believe it's you. pretty I just, long. I know they were in so there. So I just was curious to know. It, I think it used to be done twice a year, mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem, or okay, three times is even better. Um, but it doesn't seem like it's been done. So I didn't know if something had changed, and that's what I was asking. Or did it just get missed? We'll look into that for you. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you for making this research at that point. Just mm -hmm. always feel free to call the township. There's a lot of area in the bottom of that that they're letting grow. Because that's what's yeah, and that's not exactly, I mean, you can really, it's really coming up on the sides. All right, we'll check. So, thanks. Michelle, do you have a general comment? Okay. <laughs> Three minutes, please. Okay. Michelle Kurt, Shore 1101, I asked you when you brought up about the, the host agreement and about that you were uh, doing something with the zoning. If we could be made aware of it and also if there could be a public meeting so the residents had a right. And you said yes. And you totally ignored what we requested as residents. And I think that um, we had a right to put in um, our two cents because it's, it's the township's property. <coughs> and you didn't do that. And you took an illegal vote tonight. And then we find out, was Mr. Cohn the only one who was down there negotiating? You don't know and you voted on something you don't know about. Well, first of all, he's not qualified to do so. Does anyone know what the other landfills are getting uh, as host fees in this county? Mm -hmm. What are they getting, John? Mm -hmm. Public comment. You, you don't want to comment? <laughs> okay, That's well, the there's, one. there's one landfill that a municipality has over $60 million in the bank. Even from the sale of our sewer plant would have been enough to build the firemen their house right away as soon as their fire, new firehouse. <coughs> Ten cents a ton more is an insult to our municipality. And it is not right to not let the residents vote and to push this through. And it's no offense to you, Mr. Mascara. No, no, it isn't. It's to any landfill, any landfill, and I'm entitled to my opinion. That's why we're letting you talk. And and that land, we wanted to have some kind of businesses down there. And Mr. Mascara, who's we? The township wanted to. Well, that's why you zoned it differently before. And Mr. Mascara had promised different business parks down there, and it never came to be but i'm concerned about the welfare of our residents and that what's best for our residents not what's best for anyone else and i just want to make sure that our firemen are taken care of for sure right away in the future they don't have to wait any longer for a firehouse which we could do anyway with the monies from the firehouse and we have people that um really need to know what they're negotiating about and to look into what other agreements that they have. Okay. Thank you for your comment, Ms. Kircher. Next up. Ms. Kircher. Good evening, Bill Fox, a Pioneer Crossing Landfill, J.P. Mascaro and Sons, 727 Red Lane Road. First, I'd like to uh, thank the township for its consideration of the two proposed agreements which the solicitor, Sam Cortez, at the August 26th meeting indicated would be considered by the board tonight, and they were considered and adopted. Uh, Mr. Cortez, Mr. Supervisor Bianconi, Mr. Granger, in a process that started approximately two months ago when we were approached by the township to increase the benefits under our host community agreement and to give the township additional controls which they would otherwise not get under the original host agreement, uh, we agreed and we were favorably inclined to assist the township as we have done financially, environmentally, in many numerous ways for the last 20 years. And the amendments to these agreements were broken out into two agreements, which the board considered tonight. As it relates to uh, some of Ms. Uh, Ms. Kirshner's remarks about the landfill, uh, it's important to know 
that this woman has been a staunch opponent of the Mascaro family and the pioneer crossing land. She's, she's also she's years. also she's also one of her supervisors, so uh, I, I, she has I, a show off. That. But and she made a comment oh. about she made a comment about about what other landfills are paying. Well, there in Berks County. The, ho the money Pioneer Crossing pays to host to, to municipalities is three dollars and fifty-five cents per ton. Two dollars and twenty-five cents to Exeter Township, a dollar thirty to Birdsboro. Without the dollar thirty to Birdsboro, the landfill would never have gotten approved the last expansion. Other landfills, Western Berks landfill, currently two dollars per ton. Rolling Hills landfill, currently three dollars per ton. Conestoga landfill currently one dollar and fifty five one dollar and fifty cents per ton. The, the the mega landfill that she didn't name but she was talking about was the Groves landfill down in Bucks County, which takes five voluminous volumes of waste uh, and I think it's like twenty thousand tons a day or something like that. So to compare, try to compare our landfill, which is very small, very local handle area and regional customers or something like that it's just not fair and it's not reasonable we have been uh, benefiting this township so economically socially and environmentally for 20 years we've been a good corporate citizen and these agreements uh, that you voted on tonight are good for both the pioneer crossing landfill and Exeter Township and you should be congratulated uh, for uh, stepping forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mascaro, would you like to speak? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Fox. I think so. my, my name is Pat Mascaro, uh, 640 Only Line Road and Pioneer Crossing Landfill. I want to first thank the board for being very straightforward. I failed in negotiations and no nonsense, and quite frankly, I was impressed with the business approach of the board. I want the public to know, it is a fact, that the township came to me trying to seek greater controls and more money from my operation. I would have needed nothing from Exeter Township for up to 25 years. I could have continued under the same economic arrangement for up to 25 years. But instead, I thought about my children and I thought about my grandchildren. And I wanted to make sure that they did not have to come to th these type of meetings that I've had to come to in the past and listen to the type of conduct that we just heard from the former supervisor. This is a progressive township. This is a great township. That's why I have so much money invested here outside of the landfill. This is a forward-thinking, progressive board. The meetings, I've been impressed. They've been business-oriented. That's a good sign for people like me, the taxpayer. That's a good sign like you. The days of personal preference and political expediency, and that's a way of the young lady that came up here and tried to say, take no offense, Mr. Mascara, this is how I feed my five children, my grandchildren. Those days are over. As me as chairman, those days are and over. I'm responsible for 908 <laughs> oh, employees. And I intend to be a friend to Exeter Township, and I'm going to work for the fire company as if I'm working for myself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mascara. Mm -hmm. Supervisor reports. Jeff. Nothing this week. Dave. Nothing. <coughs> Oh, you know, I got some. So I just wanted to, again, thank, uh, um, congratulations to Darren on her baby. Also, um, thank you again to Mr. Mascaro and also, like I said, to the fire department that are here. Uh, I, I, we can't say enough for you guys. And, and we did get a great letter about you guys uh, from a fire that you were just recently at. And like I said, again, you're just above, above the, the call of duty and, and exemplary. So um, again, the host agreement that we have Mr. Mascaro didn't have to actually dump any. He could have dumped twenty thousand dollars, twenty thousand tons a year, which would have at two thirty, two twenty-five would have not been anything. Um, under this new agreement, I believe he has to do at least three hundred sixty to four hundred thousand tons, and that difference right there, that forty thousand tons at two thirty-five a ton, is uh, ninety-five, ninety-four thousand dollars. So that's huge for the township. Plus, he's also going to donate sixty grand. A year at least minimum to minimum to 60 grand towards other things for the township 
it could be the library if they need a carpet, whatever. I mean, and, and again, above and beyond. So again, thank you again. I just had two things. October 2nd is going to be the sunshine training for the supervisors. And um, we did get a great letter from Schwarzwald Church with the job that Chris and your team did. So I just want to, you guys are loving here. So I congratulate you guys. Right work. About that fire, and before we adjourn, about the Schwarzwald fire, just want to tell the public what happened there, if you can. Not to put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll, yeah, we'll recess. We went, went on a happy note. You won't get attacked. <laughs> you don't need it. Yeah. Throw the gavel at them if they come at it. Yes, I like to uh, <laughs> back comments. Uh, Deputy Chief Gordon, the incident commander. Um, I was there to help, but uh, anyway, we felt that it was a lightning strike, uh, energized their conduit, their electrical conduit. Um, the fire went underground and into their service box, so it was a uh, kind of a difficult fire to trace. We were worried about there was extension into the church and other parts of the uh, facility, but uh, we did our due diligence. We stayed for a number of hours just to make sure um, the fire was out and contained, and uh, luckily it was. And, uh, we even followed up the next day, visited the church, and made sure everything was okay. So uh, I'll echo those comments to the crew. They did a fine job, as always, and um, very proud of their efforts. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Chief. Thanks. Hour, hour and ten minutes. Like, that was the lightning strike up on um, Hillside, up on 40, for the 47th Street. Like, like three houses were hit. You guys were there for that one. And I actually had to go uh, help the, the one lady, uh, her grandson, just teach my daughter violin. So I helped her out. And, it, and when that lightning hit, it it blew out, like melted, like I don't know, six or seven lines. I went to like a dryer and other things. That, um, and there was like three other people that had issues. I mean, it, it, it could be pretty dangerous. So. Thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 aye.